Now, before we get into today's video, I want you all to click the link below and join my email list right now. There's a whole lot of great content that I want to send to you, but YouTube, well, YouTube doesn't let me show you. Must be systemic racism. They deleted a bunch of our videos, but that will not stop me from telling you the truth. So join my email list right now. The link is in the description. Double standard, that's why people are so angry. And that brings us now to Hunter Biden. And it's not about Hunter, it's about whether or not Joe benefited from his overseas dealing in ways that are illegal. Right now, Hunter apparently is under investigation uh, for not registering as a foreign lobbyist. We know that on the laptop he refers to the big guy, clearly his father, according to Tony Bobolinsky, a former partner of, of Hunter Biden, that's Joe Biden, getting 10%. So if Hunter Biden failed to legally register as a lobbyist for foreign entities and he received money and gave part of that money to the old man, aren't they both criminally culpable? Even Brian Stelter at CNN says, this is serious. You can't just write this off as right wing propaganda. I haven't heard the reason son? why. What about Hunter? Hunter under federal investigation. Charges could be coming at any time. This is not just a right wing media story. This is a real problem mm -hmm. for the Bidens. Mm -hmm. Could he decide not to run for re-election, given his son? This is not just right wing stuff. This is a real problem for the Bidens, plural, plural. Joe Biden consistently said, I knew absolutely nothing about my son's business. By the way, he's the smartest guy I know. And on the laptop, which was called Russian disinformation by, what was it, 51 uh, foreign uh, officials, intel officials, when they put out that open letter, when that story broke just days before the election, this has all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation, they said. And then after Biden is safely elected, New York Times, Washington Post, yeah, uh, the laptop story was valid, even though it was suppressed by Twitter and by Facebook. And you wonder why Donald Trump is angry. You wonder why we feel that there is a double standard. And speaking of Hunter, another story in the Daily Mail, exclusive, Vice President Joe Biden met with two Chinese energy execs in the West Wing when he was VP. The 15th meeting with businessmen tied to his son's company. May I repeat that? The 15th meeting with businessmen tied to his son's company, who days later, sent Hunter a fawning email offering to fix his 102,000 luxury EV. By the way, we still don't know whether or not Joe Biden owns an EV because uh, the press secretary was asked that and she just danced around and danced around and danced around. I guess she'll circle back. Let's go to CPAC, where I was a few days ago in Dallas. They had a straw poll and guess who won the straw poll? Donald Trump the man whose place was just raided by the FBI. He got 59% and Ron DeSantis, some polls have him higher than Donald Trump in New Hampshire. He got 24% of those who say they want either one to be the next nominee in 2024. Not too bad. Now, about Joe Biden, we'll get back to that in a second because we're raising taxes, uh, even though we've had back-to-back -back quarters of, quote, negative economic growth. As I said before, I never have quite understood what negative economic growth means. But um, as you know, Joe Manchin, having said that the Build Back Better plan was too big, too expensive, would be inflationary, would add to the debt and the deficit, has now caved. Uh, and a slimmer but still grotesque, smaller Build Back Better bill uh, he's agreed to uh, in his past, and Joe Biden has now signed it. I just want to remind you of what Democrats used to say, some Democrats that you might know of, about raising taxes during a recession. The last thing you want to do is to raise taxes in the middle of uh, a recession. When the economy is in decline, you don't want to raise overall taxes. I, I don't think during a time of recession you mess with any of the taxes or increase any taxes. No one is going to want to raise taxes when we have a recession. In an economy like this, the last thing we should do is raise taxes on the middle class. That was so then, and, we, and, and by the way, since they redefined recession, I guess we're not in a recession, so it's... 
Well, the new GDP statistics are in, and they show that we are indeed in a recession. Whether the Biden administration calls it a recession or not, most Americans think our economy is heading the wrong way. We are in a recession. Inflation, a 40-year high right now. And if all your money is in the market or tied to the US dollar, you're messing with fire. Meanwhile, precious metals like gold are doing exactly what they should do. So what do I do? Hedge against inflation by visiting LarryForGold.com and get your free information kit on how to diversify and protect your savings with precious metals from Birch Gold Group. They've got an a rating with the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands, I mean thousands of satisfied customers. Gold is the right investment to make right now. Visit LarryForGold.com and get real help from Birch Gold today. Again, visit LarryForGold.com to claim your free, no obligation information kit on how to protect your hard-earned savings with gold. When I was doing C-SPAN over the weekend, guy calls up and he said, you know, uh, I watch a lot of programs. Uh, I've never seen you on a black person's show. I've seen you on Fox. I've seen you on conservative outlets. I've never seen you on a black person's show. And I said, well, uh, he said, I've never seen you on, uh, 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 what's, his, what's that guy's name? Roland Martin's show. And I said, well, I debated Roland Martin uh, during the 26, 2016 election on whether or not Trump or Hillary would be better for the country. I said, I crushed him and told him that uh, Trump was going to win the election. He thought I was crazy. He was wrong. He has a show. He's never invited me on his show. I was invited on the Joy Reid show during my campaign, but I was invited on so many shows during that time, I, we couldn't work her in. But when the campaign was over, she's not invited me. I was on the Tavish Smiley show where he called me anti-black. Um, and I'll give you another thing. Uh, there's a program called Charlemagne the God. Charlemagne the God was the one who was interviewing Joe Biden when Joe Biden said, if you don't know whether or not you want to vote for me or Trump, you ain't really black. He's interviewed Kamala Harris. Uh, I believe he interviewed Joe Biden. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but the guy interviews a lot of people. I'm on an airplane a few months ago with an actor comedian named Bill Bellamy. We have a nice conversation. And as he's getting warmed up to me, he said, you know, I have a good friend named Charlemagne the God. You ought to appear on his show. I said, he's never invited me. He said, well, I can, I, can, I can arrange that. I'm a good friend of his. I said, here's my information. Here's my cell phone number. Here's my email address. Follow me on Twitter. I'll follow you on Twitter. And we direct message each other on Twitter a couple times after that. Crickets. He couldn't bring it down. He couldn't get Charlemagne the God to offer me an invitation to come on the show. So I said to the gentleman, what do you want me to do? You got to invite me. I mean, I just can't show up. Hi. I'm here. My name is Larry Yell. I want to be interviewed. Can you interview me? It, does, it doesn't work that way. So that brings me to The View. Never been invited on The View. Love to come on. Love to uh, tangle with Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg. Invite me. Now, they've invited Ron DeSantis on The View, and Ron DeSantis said no. And the reason he said no, quote, are the hosts... Are the view really interested in hearing from Governor DeSantis, has often said, about all the important work he's doing on behalf of Floridians to protect their health and livelihoods? Which of the following statements from the host of The View do you recommend our team consider when deciding if the interview will be a genuine pursuit of the truth? And then they post a few things that were said by some of the co-hosts of The View. Joy Behar, August 2021. You're just short of calling Governor DeSantis a negligent homicidal sociopath because that's what he is. What is he doing? He's risking the lives of children, children's parents, their grandparents, anyone they may come in contact with so he can appeal to his white supremacist base so he can continue in his career and get reelected, end of quote. White supremacist base. In other words, the man's a Republican. That is a standard kind of thing that the left does. 1964, Barry Goldwater gets nominated as Republican nominee. The governor of California, Democrat named Jerry Brown says, and I'm quoting, the stench of fascism is in the air. That's how these guys roll. 
So you call me a white supremacist, but now you say, quote, it would be an honor, that's how they put it, would be honored to have DeSantis on for an interview. That brings us to Sonny Hostin. Quote, death Santis. I think he's a fascist and a bigot. Close quote. But we'd, we'd be honored to have you on our show. We love interviewing fascists and bigots. We love interviewing white supremacists. We'll give you a fair opportunity to explain your position because after all, we're open-minded. We're down the middle. We're not hostile toward Republicans. It would be honored to have a fascist and a bigot to come on the program. Anna Navarro, a, an alleged Republican. It's referring to the policies of DeSantis, the so-called don't say gay bill. It's anti-black. It's anti-gay. It's anti-LGBTQ plus community. Sometimes they throw in the QIA, but I guess sometimes they don't. It's anti-LGBTQ plus community. And for some reason, Republican base responds to it. It's anti-it's anti-American. It's what happens in Venezuela. It's what happens in Nicaragua, she writes. And for some reason, for some reason, the Republican base, it, it, these guys respond to white supremacists. These guys respond to fascist outreach. These guys respond to bigotry. I want to remind you of something that Chris Matthews said, and I mentioned this when I was being interviewed by C-SPAN. Chris Matthews used to have a show on MSN Bihiha. He's left wing as all get out. He wrote a book called Hardball about campaigns. It's a very good book about nuts and bolts of campaigns. He was the press secretary to the then Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill. He said most white people would not vote for somebody if they thought they, and he didn't mean they in the pronoun of the way they do it woke right now. He just didn't say he or she. Most white people, said Chris Matthews, would not vote for somebody if they thought they were racist. So here this astute left-wing political analyst saying, white people won't vote for somebody if they think they're racist. But supposedly Donald Trump sent a racist dog whistle to his racist base in order to get elected. It's nonsense. Let's get back to Ms. Hostin, shall we? Here's what she said in February 22. It started with CRT. Let's remember that. And those are anti-history laws, anti-black history laws, really. If you start coming after black people, what comes next? Of course, the LGBTQ plus community, and then women, and then other marginalized groups, end of quote. In what way has Ron DeSantis started, quote, coming after black people, close quote. By opening up the state, by making sure that people get in-person education, when the studies have now shown that virtual education is dramatically inferior and kids, blacks are already behind, 85%, as we've talked about this before, of blacks in the eighth grade are neither math nor reading proficient, 85%. And Ron DeSantis, unlike the governor of California, did not deny these marginalized kids a whole year of in-person education. But he's anti-black. In what way? In what way? So the staffers for Ron DeSantis responded in the following way. Quote, we will pass on this offer. Also, please note, we don't coordinate appearances or events of a political nature for from the official office. Our role is to serve the people of Florida, end of quote. So apparently Mr. DeSantis will not be appearing on The View. Let's have a moment of silence for their failure to get this guest that they said they would be very honored to have. Moment of silence, okay, it's over. Hope you enjoyed that video. The full show is available to watch right now on Epoch TV. Just click the link in the description below to learn more because we've got a country to save.